good morning, everybody. Um, my name is George Warnegaris. Like uh, Seth said, I work at CERT. Um, at this point, when I give a, give a presentation, I like to put out a little disclaimer. Um, I'm not a very good public speaker. I'm very nervous at this. Um, my day job, I'm an analyst. Um, I sit in a room with no windows, and I don't talk to a lot of people. <laughs> So if my voice gets shaky or I talk too fast or whatever, I hope you bear with me um, because I'm, I'm really, um, I'm proud to be here to present today. Um, I think this is some of the best minds in computer network security and uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm honored. So um, to give you a little overview of what I want to speak about today, first of all, um, I'm going to Give, uh, set the table, give you a little bit of uh, introduction about who, uh, where I work and what I do and how this project came about. Um, if you uh, already have, uh, a lot of you I'm sure in this room already know about this, so it'll be a good time to you know, check your Twitter or to zone out for a little bit, uh, and I'm just going to take hopefully about five minutes. Then I'm going to uh, give a background uh, about the setup of the, the work. We'll talk about how we export it from Bro. We'll talk about the analysis we did with that data, and then we'll think about how to go from that analysis back into Bro. Uh, so, like I said, a little bit of background. Um, this is the Software Engineering Institute in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and um, they were established by the Department of Defense as a FFRDC, a federally funded research and development center back in 1984. And I could see from the gray hair around this room that a lot of you guys were in the field at that time, so you probably remember it well. Um, uh, Carnegie Mellon has several colleges, and the Software Engineering Institute is a college-level program there, although uh, we don't grant any degrees. Um, SEI, Software Engineering to Institute, is best known for the CMM capability maturity model. And uh, to talk about exactly what is an FFRDC, um, basically it's a section in the, um, the Code of Federal Regulations that says that we have a special relationship with the government. And because of that relationship, down here at the bottom, it says that um, how uh, an FFRDC may perform other than sponsoring agency under the Economy Act or applicable leg legislation when work is not otherwise available from the private sector. So the, the idea is we get access to government data, but if the work is being done in the public sector, then we should stand down and we need to behave uh, in a manner that's uh, res you know, respectable according to that uh, arrangement. So uh, CERT is a part of the SEI, and it was established in 1988 after the Morris Worm breakout. Uh, DARPA asked us, asked the organization to um, begin coordinating internet sites. I'm sure everyone's really familiar with that, with that story. Um, so since 1988, we've uh, done a lot of work for the Department of Defense, and uh, we were instrumental in standing up uh, U.S. CERT as an advisory, uh, as an advisor, um, but we are definitely a distinct organization from U.S. CERT. Um, CERT is uh, made up of four divisions, and um, the place where I work is in the CERT Coordination Center. There's a line going from there to these green boxes below, and um, our CERT CC is now made up of four parts, and I'm a representative of the Network Situational Awareness Team, or what we call NetSA. Um, NetSA was, the precursor to NetSA was established in somewhere around 2000 when a gentleman by the name of Dr. Suresh L. Khanda um, came up with the idea that maybe we should uh, set up NetFlow in sponsor organizations so that we can have an, a historical record of uh, what, what's been going on. And I was thinking about that yesterday, Seth, when you said um, Ohio State Flow Tools. Um, back in those days, uh, there, you know, we, this organization's been around probably as long as, uh, as that. Okay, so that's 
where I'm from. Let's talk about the project a little bit. Um, it all started in FlowCon of January this year. Um, I went to the talk and the tutorial with Seth and Liam when they started talking about Bro, and uh, I, Doug was there, and he presented his uh, Security Onion thing. I think that guy must do that Security Onion install probably like three times a month. I, I, every time I see him or hear about him, he's, he's doing uh, next, next, next. Um, so um, <laughs> even though uh, the the even though uh, it, Bro has been around for a long time, um, and I was aware of it before FlowCon this year, I didn't realize uh, the potential. I guess um, I, um, I didn't I didn't understand that um, you know something so old could really be the future, but it really clicked in uh, this year in Albuquerque. And um, I, a group of us who were there thought that, hey, we, um, in the interest of our sponsors, need to uh, get more familiar with this tool, get this tool deployed, and um, get it out there because you can, get, you can get things out of it that you can't get out of any other product. So um, we started brainstorming how to do that, and uh, we had a couple ideas. First of all, um, I set up Bro in my private lab and um, we made plans to install it on our industrial strength lab. Um, we, uh, Mr. Jones, George Jones in the back there is working on uh, running some bro scripts to integrate with his projects and we're basically just trying to get the ball rolling to see how we could get it into play. So my idea was, hey, if bro is watching every packet, maybe we can use it with our tools. We, you know, what, what pieces of our tools would integrate with bro data? So um, that's, that's how this got started. And um, I encourage you all this year, I know you already know about it, but FlowCon, it's our 10th anniversary. We're in Charleston, South Carolina, which I hear is a great place. Um, we always have top caliber, um, we always have top caliber presentations there, much like uh, this venue. And um, uh, Dr. Vixie is gonna be the keynote this year, so it should be great. So um, why, why why wouldn't I just use Bro? Why would I uh, go out of Bro and go into network flow? So uh, first of all, yeah, obviously, you can store a lot more flow than you can PCAP, everybody knows that. But the implication of that is I can store for longer, much longer, and the other thing is I can store, sort and search through it a lot faster than I can. Uh, a common technique that we do with network flow is to use it as an index into the PCAP, where I want to find this IP in this window, I can look at the flow very quickly and narrow down to uh, a set of PCAP files to, to search manually. Um, another reason is that the silk tools and network flow tools in general are widely deployed. There's a lot of expertise in the, in the field with people who know how to use Silk and know how to use um, uh, other flow tools as well. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't think that they'll ever be their own. I, I think you always need other tools to go with it, but I also think that it would be nice to take advantage of that institutional knowledge that we have. And it was a cool project, so uh, I uh, took it up. This is our website, tools.netsa.cert.org, and uh, on the left there, you'll see these are the list of our, um, th this is the list of all the tools. The ones that um, I thought would fit well with Bro were, of course, Silk, um, the analysis pipeline, and a little known tool that is relatively new called Snarf. So I'm gonna use uh, Pipeline, Snarf, and Silk uh, with Bro data and, and see what I can do. Okay, so uh, real quick, Silk, um, you notice the weird capital, capitalization in Silk, that's uh, in memory of Suresh Alkanda. He uh, passed away prematurely in somewhere around 2004 and um, they, they named the tool set after him. Um, uh, again, you know, it, it, a flow record, a silk flow record could get down to as small as somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 60 bytes, I want to say. So we're able to store it, uh, a lot of it, we're able to search through it quickly. Um, silk is written uh, 
in the in the in the tradition of Unix. So they're small tools. They're meant to do one thing and to get um, synergy out of all the tools. You you piece them together with pipes. Uh, so, so here's a list of the tools. Um, so you see there's a couple or three dozen of them. Um, every, everyone has its, uh, like I said, it's, it's one job to do. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, throughout the talk, go into a couple of these that, uh, that I used for this project. Uh, pipeline is uh, pipeline is like flow or like silk a lot, except it's automated. Um, you don't have to put queries into in to, uh, pipeline directly. What you do is you write a configuration file, and as the flow records are going to the repository, they're automatically processed by pipeline. And uh, just a little side note, I was thinking about doing a pipeline paper because when I first came across, I thought, oh man, this is a this is a great idea, you know, do real-time flow monitoring. But then I realized that I uh, did a little research and the real-time uh, real flow meter, RTFM, was a, a group that started sometime back in like the 80s or early 90s. And, uh, you know, so it's really not, it's not that novel of, uh, of an idea. And it's just a re-implementation of what they've been doing for decades. But um, it's a solid tool. We just released version 4.0. And uh, I, I think it's pretty, pretty useful. Um, because you can do things like this, look at, you know, in, in near real time what, uh, what's going on on the network. Uh, so SNARF, uh, SNARF I think would be of interest to this community because its only job in life is to send messages, to receive messages and send them out and it abstracts away a lot of that work that you uh, need to do to, in order to uh, send, send messages. Uh, I put this picture on there just to show that it's designed uh, modular. It has a modular design, and um, it, it's pretty uh, complex. It can do a lot of things. Um, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody new who you wanted to like, you know, check it out unless you're you're pretty competent in Unix and you know a little bit about programming, um, because it's uh, it's. it's uh, I wouldn't say it's very polished, but useful. So what I wanted to do is take Bro. Uh, data. I'm gonna pipe it into. A I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to take flow out of out of bro. I'm gonna pipe it into a script so that I could clean it up for consumption by the silk tool called rwcut. Rwcut is a lot like Unix cut. Uh, it takes text data and turns it into binary flow records. From there, we'll pipe that to a tool called the RW flow append, which does the packing. And then once I have it packed, I can use all the other tools, filter and pipeline, to, to do some analysis on this data. Then from pipeline, I would send it to SNARF. From SNARF, not only could I, what I, ideally I would like to go back to Bro for a few reasons that I'll get into, but um, you know I can also send to ArcSight and et cetera. Okay, so um, I heard people say at least twice yesterday that uh, I'm kind of embarrassed to show this because it's so simple, and um, that's definitely the case here. Um, I'm uh, when I'm listening to the uh, the quality of the talks yesterday, I realized that uh, this is this is very simple, very elementary, and I have to confess that I learned most of my um, programming from uh, Scott Rummel's uh, excellent tutorial. Thanks for that. Um, so, uh, if you uh, just to state the obvious here, what, what this is doing is looking at the, the connection state remove. So in other words, we don't want to write a flow record until the, we know that the connection is done. So when it's done, write out uh, source IP, desk IP, source address, uh, uh, source port, desk port, protocol, and uh, number of packets and duration. Um, I, I'd like to have a conversation about how inefficient this is, and a, a new term I, I learned the other day was uh, script land. This this is done in script land, and what really needs to ha if this works on my personal lab, if you wanted to do this in a real network, you need to to get out of script land, and uh, um, I I uh, so I wouldn't even 
I wouldn't even want to have a long conversation about how I could optimize this particular script because it does, this is the wrong way to do it. But um, my goal was to have a pr proof of concept and show that it could be useful. And so for that, I, I guess it's good enough, although it's, it's not that good. So here's my Perl. Um, showing people your Perl is like showing them, you know, the, the inside of your oven, your kitchen. Like it's just, I, I don't want to show it off because it's that bad, but uh, I, I mean, you, to, to just, I put it up here though because I wanted to show you what I was doing. I was taking the, the bro record, I was splitting it, and then, um, you know, doing a little formatting so that RW Cut would like it. And uh, you'll see here I send it to RW Tuck, and then, and then I print it out, um, straightforward. Um, there was a few problems with this as well. I ran into some issues with um, buffering, um, which as I found out doing a little Googling, it's, it's a pretty common problem when you're trying to do both input and output. And uh, I, I try to work around it, but um, that has issues as well. So, but I did, I did actually get a flow record and I got lots of flow records out of it. So, um, I, it, right, that to me was the proof of concept that it can be done and so great. Um, I, I started collecting a, a couple weeks of data. Um, the, one of the big deficiencies, although this is um, a UDP record, uh, you know, it doesn't have any flags, but in general, I, I wasn't able to get any flags out, and that's, again, a limitation of my understanding of uh, the Bro language, so um, I, that, that would have to be addressed as well. Um, I was talking to Donovan earlier today, and we were, you know, we were speaking about how to actually do this the right way. And um, what he told me was, there, what we want to do is use libfixbuf, which is a, a C program that uh, outputs IPFIX format, and that would be like the the proper way. Um, there's still some issues with that. Um, if there's Python bondings to that, maybe we want to prototype it. Or, um, and then we'd have to look at licensing and stuff like that, but um, you know, that would be the right way to go. Uh, this is just to show you my, uh, my pipeline config. Um, it, I was able to get it running. I didn't do any serious analysis with pipeline, just enough to um, have it uh, consume packets. So I was able to get, uh, get, it, get the data out. So once I had it out, um, it, it was pretty standard. If you're familiar with Silk, this is just a basic RW filter call. RW filter is piping to RW sort. And RW sort is just arranging by start time. So um, I'm, this query was for one particular IP address. I wanted to see, hey, what is this guy doing? And uh, I can see he's looking, he's doing a lot of UDP port 10,000 and a uh, little bit of web, a little bit of DNS. This is a, this is a Vonage phone. Um, here's, I was able to do just some basic, uh, which, you know, Again, learning from what uh, from what I learned this week, this is probably very redundant to do. Um, you, if you wanted to look at how much how much traffic passed through your network, you could probably do that in Bro directly instead of going through all these hoops. Um, you know, here's my top ten web visits, top ten servers that were contacted by the network, and uh, here's the, the all the different countries that uh, my network interacted with, RW stats. And uh, this is some pipeline outlet uh, output. Again, this isn't anything that's, uh, that's worthwhile, but just, uh, you know, hey, it, it could be done. The, the configuration file didn't have a lot of analysis in it. So uh, we were able to pull the data out. We are able to slice and dice it and look at it with the flow tools. And so now the idea is reaching back you know, how do I, how, maybe I want to take those results and, and put them back into Bro. And um, this, this is about as far as I got on it um, I, because I, I really don't know much. Um, so like, you know, like I was saying before, I have the dotted line there going back to Bro. And um, uh, I would like to do that 
Um, we have a couple, we identified a couple of use cases from our sponsor. The first one was from law enforcement, and that would be where um, you have the permission to look at a network connection, but you don't have permission to go all the way down into the packet. So the idea is, um, you know, we're kind of just put whiteboarding this, and we're saying, well, it, wouldn't it be nice if we were able to look uh, with pipeline at the traffic going by, then once I see an internal address interact with a known bad guy, then I have cause to dig deeper into the packet. And so then now maybe I can say to bro, hey, you know, instead of just collecting flow on this guy, I want you to do a deep dive into what he's doing. Um, that was one, and the other use case that we thought of was uh, a drop-in sensor. And that's, you know, we have a, a large network and we identified some trouble down in one of the, the smaller sub-networks, so we wanna drop the sensor in there directly and see what's going on. Um, usually those things, a flyaway kit like that doesn't have a big disk, so we wanna be judicious about what you're capturing and we thought maybe we could use the same process where um, you know, you do your pipeline config and you identify suspicious behavior and at that time you flag to uh, capture those kinds of things. And again, um, I, you know, coming to a bro conference and talking about, you know, silk is, uh, you know, not very comfortable for me because I imagine that what a lot of people are thinking is that, hey, I could just do this in bro and you're probably right, but, uh, Again, I think there's other reasons why this would be useful to, to throw a few uh, man weeks at to, to get it done right. So uh, just to sum up, uh, my name is George Warner Garris. Uh, I work at the Software Engineering Institute, CERT, which is part of Carnegie Mellon. Um, we're happy to be uh, a member of the, the Bro community. Um, we. Uh, did a little bit of experimentation. We're at the beginning stages to see how we could best uh, get the most out of Bro. And uh, I think that what we've shown is that um, it is useful, it can be done, and um, it would be worth the time. Uh, but it's not finished yet. We, there's still a whole lot of work to do. Probably, you know, we need to get the smart guys in on this who know how to get down into the internals, and uh, they could probably do it pretty quickly. And I'm gonna recommend to whoever I speak to that we spend that time to do it. So, uh, does anybody have anything to say? Sir? So, bro, sorry. So it looks like on, the, on there, it, it's a cycle where you would output some silk flow records from bro and then do some manual processing to find whatever you're looking for and then feed them back into Bro from Pipeline to do something? Or did I, did uh, I get that right? So a um, couple things. When Bro exports, um, it's not doing it in native Silk format, although that probably could be done. Um, it's, it's outputting the text, so you need to convert that, and that's what the, the script is doing. And then my thought was, you know, we could process it with the tools that we're very familiar with and we have a lot of expertise in and then pipe the results of that analysis back to Bro, and that would be the use case of law enforcement where, hey, I have a pipeline script that is doing some magic and I can identify when people are being suspiciously, and when I do identify that, tell Bro to treat that connection differently and do maybe some more enhanced logging. So it may not be the, the case that the, the flow records are actually going back into Bro, but you would use that to trigger Bro to do additional things on more traffic in that flow. Th that was my thought, um, how I approached it, but I, I like what you're thinking. Um, I don't know that that's a good idea, but I, I don't know that it's a bad idea either. Do, would Bro consume flow records? Okay. Could. Thank you. Thanks. Hey. Um, I was just curious about um, the and I'm an elementary programmer as well, so your script is uh, enlightening to look at. Um, the output from your script, uh, is there anything novel about it that's not already in the connection logs? And the, the question would be, if not, like, could you write something to just monitor the current connection log, similar to like a, how Barnyard monitors the Unified 2 and just wait for changes and parse it out instead of uh, 
adding the overhead of generating another log? Um, so you asked if there was any other data besides what was in the log. And right. The so the the your output is here, no. is, is there anything in your output here that's not already in the connection log? No. So could in, instead of writing another one, could you just parse the, uh, the current connection log? Y yes, yes. Um, and I, I, I think that that might be a direction that this would go. Um, I don't think that that's a good idea. I mean, because basically what you would do is rewrite the silk tools and to, to deal with plain text. Um, it can be done. It would probably be relatively easy to do. But first of all, why reinvent the wheel? To keep, to, you know, do one thing and do it well. Um, second of all, when you store plain text, um, you're not getting any of the compression or the, the benefit of, of silk is that it, the records are very small. This line, you know, which in ASCII, I don't know what the size is, when you compress it into silk format, it's, you know, 40 to 60 bytes. So um, you can, it's more efficient. Um, so I, 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 that's what I was kind of alluding to before. You know, I'm in a room of broke people, and so the first thing they're, what you think, or, you know, uh, it's a nail of a hammer. I'm going to I'm going to use the tool that I have and that I know to do it. But I, what I'm saying is just think about that before you do it, because the tools are already out there, in my opinion. cybersecurity domain, um, one way that I see this um, be applicable to the Bro community is to kind of in, uh, integrate the research that CERT does and applies to Silk you know, into the Bro domain. Uh, do you have any, any wisdom um, about that? And so you, when you say knowledge, I mean, to me, the word that I would use are analytics. Like, we, we have analytics that we use. Um, you know, it's nothing that's going to revolutionize the industry, but that's what we have a lot of expertise in. And yeah, absolutely, that's why I'm here. That's why um, you know the other guys are here because we want you know we 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 want to do that kind of integration. George. Go to flowcon.org, look at the archives for the last 10 years. We've had quite a number of submissions, not only from us, but, you know, sort of from the larger community, and that will give you a very good sampling of the sorts of things that can be done. Second order answer would be just, you know, troll the CERT website for, for analytics and, you know, see what you can steal, right? Cool. I think it's time for a break. If um, I'd be happy to continue this talk at, at any time. Thank you.